this is probably one of the things, if, if you went back and looked at every series that I've ever taught on, this one's probably one of the ones that I've taught on a lot. Um, it's one of the ones that you've heard me say it before that there, there are hundreds of scriptures in the Bible on this topic that we're going to talk about. But what's happened is what, what I've seen happen, this is me personally, I'll tell you a couple things, and I won't go super long tonight. We'll get out what we need to get out tonight, and we'll let you go, all right? Um, so this is what I've seen, that we've, we've, we've had um, people just come from where our background is. Our background, we grew up in a church background of faith, right? You might say, well, everybody did. Well, no, not everyone did. If you're thinking Catholic, Presbyterian, Baptist, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living a life of faith. Scripture says we're to walk by faith, right? And, and somehow, everyone's gotten away from it. And literally, churches like ours that we were raised in this. I, my spiritual father is Kenneth E. Hagan. I don't, I don't care if people like that or not. They're like, well, I Googled them and someone said something negative. <laughs> Google yourself. They probably said the same thing about you. So, so. That's the interesting. It's like, well, he's from Satan or whatever. And it's like, really? You, I, I personally knew him. I personally spent time with him. We personally ate meal after meal with him when he would spend two weeks at a time at our church uh, preaching every single day for two weeks at a time. Um, a, a man of God at a level that, trust me, no one who's preaching today was at his level. No one. So if you're like, oh, I like so-and-so. No one at the level that he was at and the walk that he had with God. Pretty tremendous. He was a prophet of God um, and, and, a, and a teacher of the word of God that was just phenomenal. But people hated it. People hated that he taught with authority. People hated it that he spoke on authority. People hated it that he said, you know what? It's not you're going to get healed. You already are healed. They hated that. It's like, who do you think you are? Name it and claim it, people. And they all went crazy on it. Sort of the same thing that's going on right now in politics. You get someone doing it loud enough, and then everyone's like, well, I think they're of the devil. And it's like, no, I knew them personally. Saved to the bone. Loved Jesus to the bone. Got more people saved than you would ever imagine. Just unreal. But whole churches like ours have moved away from it and said, we're not going to teach on that because it's not relevant anymore. And the truth of the matter is, and so my, my series is called Faith Is, and we're going to talk about faith, all right? And, and you, might, you might be like, well, we won't come back next week. That's the topic. No, you should come back, because everything she just talked about, faith is an action. And if you don't understand how to live and walk by faith, we've all been doing it to some point in our lives, whether you know it or not, because this whole deal is a faith walk. You ask to God to save you that you don't see, you don't feel. All you know is you believed what you heard. You believe maybe what you read. But you're serving a God that you can't sense per se. You know, you're not touching him. There's times you can sense his presence. I understand that. But um, this is a faith walk. Is it relevant? Are you kidding me? If you don't hear about faith ever, you're in trouble. You, you need to hear about it. And so in Scripture, this is interesting, um, there are over 500 verses on prayer, right? 500, it's not bad. Because if you want to go in and look on marriage, there's hardly any comparison. And marriage is vital. We teach on it a lot here in our church. We do a relationship series every year. We think it's vital. 500 on prayer. Now, I've told you this before. There's 2,000 on the subject of money. People hate that. It's like, What? And a lot of it is because God knew how most people would handle it. So he made sure there was enough in there that we'd, we'd see enough about money and on how to, how to handle it right. But on the subject of faith, there's 500 plus scriptures on that subject. Um, 19 out of the 38 people that came to Jesus as individuals, individual healing cases in the Bible, Jesus turned to them and said, your faith made you whole. He didn't turn to them and ever say this, I'm so great. I'm so full of everything, I got you healed. He never said that. And this is what's funny to me. All healing comes from God. It, there isn't a man. You know when people say, uh, so-and-so got healed by so-and-so. In fact, in my Bible, when I read through my Bible in the book of Acts, it says, so-and-so healed so-and-so. Really? So-and-so never healed so-and-so. 
People are not the healers. God is the healer, not people. Right? I mean, y'all, y'all agree with that. Some of you are looking at me like, I, I thought you were the healer. No, no one, no man is the healer. God uses people. He goes and uses them and flows through them, but they're not, they're not healers. Right? God anoints people. So we're going to talk about the subject of faith. And tonight I just want to, I'm not going to take a ton of time since a lot of what Pastor Barb said, it's interesting, is in my notes tonight. So I'm like, all right, I won't say that. All right, I won't say that. And it's okay because we did not talk. But what we always do before we come into a worship experience is talk about if you have something, because she has a legitimate call from God to preach and to minister the word of God. So if she has something, I always ask her to come up. So I want to I wanna talk to you about um, healing tonight. And one of the scriptures that I was going to just quote tonight, because I think it's interesting, Colossians 2, 6 says, in the same way that you received him, walk in him. And I think it's interesting because she brought it up. You received him by believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth. That's called faith. You can't even be saved. You can't even accept Christ. You can't be a Christian until you do that. Unless you believe in your heart, say something out of your mouth, you're actually truly not saved. If you've not done that yet, you're not saved. So, well, I thought I was. No, because you went to this church, right? I could go park myself in my garage. I don't become a car. Are y'all out there? Just because you parked yourself in a church, you're not a Christian. You're a Christian when you believe in your heart and you say something out of your mouth. That, that's called salvation, right? Are y'all with me? So tonight, I want to talk to you about something that I think is real basic. Faith is a basic thing in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, and we'll put it up on the screen, says, Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. So here's, here's what we'll say just real quickly. Faith in God or towards God is what we're going to be talking about. And it is elementary. Everyone in this room should know faith because it's elementary. If, if, if I was to rank, and, and I'll just do this real quick. If I was to rank the most important things, once you accept Christ in your life, what next are the most important things in your life as a Christ follower? So like, like, what would they be? I would say this is number one, Holy Spirit. Right? I know you might think it's not, but you can't do anything without him. I know you might think you can. I, I'm doing all this stuff without him all the way up to now. And how's that going? Right? We need the Holy Spirit in order to navigate through life. It doesn't mean we have to be weird and it doesn't mean we have to do weird things. We need him for everything that we're doing. I'd say that after salvation, Holy Spirit. And after that, just listen closely how I'm going to say this. Then I would say grace, because listen, grace is everything God did for you in Christ. Then I would say faith, because the only way you can get anything that's found in grace is receiving it by faith. And so there's a technical side to faith. And people really, I think people really got into this technical side of faith. Should I say this? Shouldn't I say this? How many times a day do I need to say something? That's not, that's not what this is. Faith is through and by a relationship with Jesus and with his word and with God. Faith is not mechanical. Are y'all out there? So if we make, if we make faith, if I, if I had a board up here tonight and I said, you know, two times two, right? And we start going through all the mechanicals of, of mathematics. That's great. That's not how faith works. I do this, then I do this, then I do it this many times. And they say, if I do it at least almost a thousand times, it'll start working. No, I know people that have said something over a thousand times and it still didn't work in their life. Faith comes through a relationship with God, his word, and Jesus. They're all really one, right? And if you don't understand that, it's not going to be a viable thing in your life. Faith is vital, guys. I don't know if you understand this or not. Um, this walk that you're in is a faith walk. So if you want to jot this down, I'm going to give you some things just real quickly. There are three kinds of faith the Bible talks about. And we've talked about it before, but it's worth, worthy of going back over. Number one is salvation faith, right? And depending on what kind of church you came from, because many of you came from this kind of church background, that's all they ever preached on is salvation. 
right? Salvation, salvation. You just heard about salvation all the time. And it's like, I'm already saved. Can you tell me how to live now? Right? I mean, I want to know how to live this walk. And part of living the walk is I, I need to know how to live by faith. So salvation, of course, Romans 10, 9 and 10, Pastor Barb mentioned, that's what I was saying. She mentioned some of these already, but it says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. Right? That's, it's in the, in the scripture. So um, salvation, faith. The second one is general Bible faith. This is what we're going to be talking about in this series. General Bible faith. You can find it all over, but I put Mark eleven twenty two. 22, really Mark eleven twenty two through 24, if you want to write that down. But um, Mark eleven twenty two 22 says this, have the God kind of faith. Well, listen closely. Everyone here, the moment you accepted Christ, had deposited in you a measure of faith. Are, are, you, all, are you all with me? And if you understand that, the day that I accepted Christ, faith was put in me automatically. It's just there. But I have to do something. It's not automatic. I have to do something. Sort of like what Pastor Barb was saying. You have, to, you have to do something. There's an action to faith. And then thirdly, and many of you know this, I, I did a lengthy series on the Holy Spirit on Wednesday nights a while back, and we talked about this, and it's called the gift of faith. It's part of the gifts of the Spirit. There are nine of them found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, is where this one is. But um, the whole chapter is about that. But we're going to talk about just general Bible faith. Now, here's what's, here's, here's what's interesting to me. I feel like people feel like this isn't, this isn't important anymore. Like, this is past. There was like a faith movement back years ago, and it's past. Are, are you? Listen, there was a faith movement that started 2,000 years ago. Jesus started it, and it's still going on now. And is going to go on until he comes back. This is not, this is not, hey, that movement's over. There are some things that I believe there are seasons for them, seasons to emphasize it, all of that stuff, but, but not this. So let me tell you how important this is and how important I think it is. In Ephesians chapter six, many of you know this. I've done series on it multiple times here at the church. There's a, there's a whole section of scripture about the armor of God. How many here are familiar with the armor of God? Ephesians chapter six, right? They've, they've written songs about it. I put my, you know, I put my shield on. I put my, you know, all that stuff in it. That's not, you don't put it on by doing that, singing that song. But I know I, I've had people tell me every morning I get up, I sing that song. I put my, I put my shoes on. I put my, and it's like, it's not doing anything, but keep doing that. Um, and that's why people get frustrated because they think that's how certain things work. But one of the pieces of armor in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, is the shield of faith. Now, faith was not important. Why on God's earth would it be literally a piece of armor you're supposed to put on and a shield went out in front of them? It says it's able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, the shield of faith. And the Bible says that the armor of God, if you read Ephesians chapter 6 through, it's the word of God. The armor is you taking the word and saying, all right, my shield of faith is not me just saying I put that out there. My shield of faith is by his stripes I am healed. My shield of faith is no weapon formed against us will prosper. My shield of faith is no evil will come near our dwelling and with long life you'll satisfy us. That's a shield of faith. That's you putting the shield of faith out there, not just singing a song that I put the, this on or that on. It's literally saying, I'm going to put this stuff out in front of me. I believe God can protect me. All right. I'm just looking to where I want to go here. So if you can write these down, I believe they'll pop these on the screen. I'm skipping down a little bit over some stuff, but 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says this, we walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. What does that mean? Listen, you all know who Joel Osteen is, but I followed in my lifetime before Joel ever came on the scene, and he, was, he always talks about how he was behind the scene. I followed Pastor John Osteen, was one of the guys that really heavily influenced my life. And Pastor John Osteen said, faith is the sixth, it's number six, sense, because 
we have our eyesight, right? We have, we, we have what we can hear. We have what we can feel. We have our senses that we have. But then you got to have faith operating in your life as a Christ follower. And faith does, does not go by what you see or hear or feel or any of the other senses. If you went by your senses, and, and, and I, I grew up under Brother Hagen's ministry, went to meeting after meeting after meeting, and I always heard him say this. He said, if I went by how I felt on most days, I would think I'm not a Christian. I know none of you feel that way, but I know I've felt that way before. There's mornings where I wake up and it's like, oh, I got to go preach today at church. And, and I don't feel like I'm a Christian right now. Did I do anything? I, I didn't do anything. I didn't get, I, didn't, I went to bed all happy and, you know, fine and everything. And then you wake up in the morning, you're like, I'm going to kill someone today. <laughs> and I have to go preach the Bible. No. So I'm just kidding. But we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by our feelings. If you're trying to get victory by a feeling, you'll never have victory in your life ever by trying to obtain it by a feeling. I just wish I could feel it. You're not going to feel stuff sometimes. Sometimes you're not going to even feel happy. You're going to wake up and feel sad. Sometimes you're going to wake up and feel like things are not well. So he says we walk by faith and not by sight. Then listen to this. Romans 1.17, if you want to write them down. Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10.38, and Old Testament Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. I know you read that one a lot. They all say this. The just or the righteous shall live by faith. So one says, I walk by faith. The other one says, I live by faith. What is it talking about? Well, your walk with God is a faith walk. And this life you're now living, it is a faith living life. We're not going by any senses and by how we feel, any of that. We're going by, we live by faith now. This is a faith journey. Every single day when we get up, it's a faith walk. The fact that you're living today and did not die before you woke up from bed, it's a faith walk. Every breath you're taking, it's faith. Whether you know it or not, every time that heart's beating and you're not really doing it, you're not saying, come on, heart, let's go. I mean, some people feel that way when they have a heart problem, but I don't ever get up and feel like, uh, I hope this thing works today. No, it's, it's all working. Why? By, it's by faith, really, honestly. We take all those things for granted, but all of this is a faith walk. So interesting enough, it says the just shall live by faith in all those. And Habakkuk says it a little bit different. It says the just shall live by his faith. The New Testament says it different. The just shall live by faith. Took out the his faith. But interesting enough, we, are, we have his faith in us. Now, I'll give you something about this before we're going to close this up just in a minute. But on the screen, write this down. Faith works this way, guys. Listen, works this way. Supply and demand. We've all learned about supply and demand probably in school, right? We sort of understand it as we get older, what supply and demand is. And that means this, supply equals grace. That's the supply. God supplied everything through and by grace. Supply and demand. Faith, the demand side is, I'm going to receive it by faith. Faith is the side, I, I receive everything that grace did. It's a supply and demand, if you would, proposition that God has made through and by his word. That's how we're going to live. Supply, demand. If God didn't supply it, then you can't demand it. If God didn't supply it, you can't ask for it by faith. But just for a side note, before we close tonight, he pretty much supplied anything you could imagine. You just have to go in the word and find out, find out what it is. So for time's sake tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, those that are, um, those that are uh, doing my screens, they can jump to this. I want to I just tell you what faith is real quick, because this is what my title is tonight. You know, the series is called Faith Is. Tonight we're going to talk about what faith is. We'll probably pick it up and, and finish it off the next week. But this is the definition. What, what is faith? Faith defined, if you look at the Greek, this is what faith, it says about faith. Faith is what I believe. That's the definition in the Greek. The word faith, what I believe. It is my conviction, what I'm convicted about. And it's what I'm convinced of. So when you think about faith, you think about it this way. Um, faith is what I believe. That's pretty simple, right? I believe in a God I don't see. That's faith. I believe tonight when we were worshiping God, his presence came in. I didn't necessarily feel it. Sometimes we do, but I believe it was here. 
And then also faith is uh, my conviction. I have convictions. You have convictions. Where does that come from? That's from your faith. That's what faith is. It's a conviction. I believe something very strongly. It's a conviction. And lastly, I'm convinced of it. Now, scripture wise, listen to this. Hebrews 11, one says this. Now faith is. That's where we got our title from. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What what does that even mean? So let me read it to you out of a translation just real quick. It says this. Now faith means putting our full confidence in the things we hope for. It means being certain of things we cannot see. This translation, Expanded Bible, is my favorite. Faith means being, being sure of the assurance or the tangible reality or the sure foundation of things we hope for, knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. The conviction, assurance, and evidence about things not seen. People have such a hard time. Well, you can't see God. I, I don't feel God. All that, that, that's exactly what faith is. Faith is, I believe, even though I don't sense or feel it. So here's two things I want you to write down, and then I'm going to close. And uh, our screen people, I'm going to have them in a moment go to this one last thing that I had tonight that I wanted you to write down, and I'll get to it in a moment. But these two things, the difference between future faith, that's what I call it, Future faith is this, putting everything you ask for off into the future. Someday, someday God's going to heal me. Someday God's going to help me out with a job. Someday God's going to help our finances out. Someday God, someday, someday, that's called future faith. I don't know if you read with me. This says now faith is. Faith is not future. Faith is now. Listen closely. Hope is future. Nothing wrong with hope. You need to have hope, right? But hope has to be brought into the now. That's called faith. And so now faith is what we're talking about. Here's how it works. I believe I receive now. See, now, that's biblical faith. I believe that I receive now. That's now faith. Future faith is not what you want to be living in. So I'll close with this thought, and then we'll pick this up next week. It's it's super cool because Pastor Barb hit so many things that were so good anyway on this. So they, all, they both just go together. But my very last screen tonight, I'll, I'll make sure they go to this, is this. Faith, there's two things you have to do with faith. And, and if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Two things that you have to do with faith. Faith needs fed and faith needs exercised. Just write that down. Faith needs fed. So here's a question as you leave church tonight. What have I been feeding my faith? That's a great question, right? Like as you leave church tonight, you might even want to jot it down. Think about this this week before we come back to next Wednesday. What have I been feeding my faith? Right? Then here's the second question. How how have I been exercising my faith? People are, I don't know how to exercise it. You use it. That's how you exercise it, right? You use it. So, so you know, I've heard people say this all the time. Over the years, I've, I, I just put, I would buy a piece of equipment and put it in my basement so I'd have a workout room in my basement. And there were reasons why I did it. I love people, and I'll stand and talk at a gym for an hour to someone because if they're going to talk to me, I'll talk to them. That's just the kind of person I am. Then I would never work out. And this started to happen to me back, back in the day. I'd be like at the, work, at the gym, you know, and I'd be like, I never get to work out. Everyone wants their counseling appointment while I'm there, right? And they want to talk. And I'm like, I never get a workout in. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You know the guy at the gym that they just walk around and they talk to everyone. They got a towel on their shirt. I'm like, what do you got a towel on? You're not going to sweat. Trust me. All you're doing is talking the whole time. So I put all this equipment in my basement, but I've had people tell me this over and over again. They'll tell me, Pastor, I mean, if I had that in my basement, I'd never use it. I'd never get motivated. That's what they say, right? Even if I had it right there, I wouldn't use it. But you have to start doing it. And this is how faith works. Some people have all the faith in the world. Jesus said if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to a mountain and it would listen and obey you and move into the sea. Small faith, Jesus said. That's all you need. He said just a seed. But see, it's just like working out. If you don't exercise your faith daily, daily, now, you guys probably have never heard of this guy, but there was a guy back, um, back early, and, and he was from um, the UK, 
His name was, um, I believe it was Robert Mueller. Some of you might have heard of him, read books about him. It's a great book out that he has about this subject of faith. And this is what he did. He had an orphanage. And he had an orphanage that needed to feed so many kids a day and needed so much money a day. He had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids in this orphanage. Well, if you, if you know anything, eventually it's going to cost you some money to do all of that. And this is back in the day. And it went by pounds back then because it was in England, you know, and so it wasn't uh, like our money, so pounds. And he said, I started off believing for one pound. And then I started believing for a hundred pounds. See, people think this is selfish until they start thinking, I'm not using this for myself. I'm believing for feeding these kids. And everyone's like, that's cool. It's okay, but don't ever believe for yourself. And I'm going to just let you know this. If you don't ever believe for yourself, um, it, it, it is not a sin to believe for yourself. Let me say it that way. But let me, let me say this to you. He got to the point where he was believing God, and he said this. He said, a million dollars has become as easy as a hundred. I'm using dollars instead of pounds. He said pounds. But could you imagine that? Now, some of you, your, your wills are turning. You're like, a million. I'm going to start believing God for a million. But God's not going to put a million dollars in your hand so you can go get retired and go lay down on a beach somewhere and never do anything for him. So you're not going to have that. And, and, and the thing that you don't understand, there's work sometimes. People are like, no, it's just, God's just going to give it to me for free. That's grace. Yeah, grace is already, everything's already done. You have to believe him. But I know people sitting right in this building tonight that God gave them like ideas for a business, for an idea, for a product, whatever. And, but there was work that went into manufacturing that and doing all the stuff that had to do to get it out. And now they're making money off of that. And that's great. But there was work involved. Most of us don't like that part. It's like, I just want a million dollars. Please drop a million on me. And there's times he's like, I'll give you an idea. And that idea that I give you, I want you to do this. And then he's going to get you into your hands money so you can do other things, not just for you. And so in closing this tonight, if faith becomes just for you and not for others around you, then we've got it a little bit screwed up. Nothing wrong with having faith and believing God for things you need in your life. But guys, faith is just not for you. Faith is so we can help other people. And I like the Robert Mueller story because he took this money and he put it into an orphanage and they bought more and more buildings. They fed more and more kids. They, they housed them. They, they, I mean, it, they had multiple buildings when it was all said and done. And it took millions of dollars to run it. And he was asked this question. Who pays for all this? He said, well, my father does. Right? He said, my, 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 my father pays for it all. And someone asked him that one time, and they didn't know who he meant. So they started to think, I would like to get to know your father, because they, they thought he was talking about his own dad. Well, his own dad wasn't paying for it. Faith in God and believing that God could supply. So here's the crazy thing that happened. There was, there was a time when, when he was newer at it, and um, that, that day, all the cabinets were empty. They had no food for the kids. And he said, all of a sudden, someone knocked at the door and said, I don't know why, but I was driving by, and my, remember, this is years ago, my milk truck that I was delivering milk, it broke down right in front of your building. And if I don't give this milk away right now, it's going to spoil. So here, you guys can have it all at the orphanage. It took care of them for weeks. And then someone else came knocking on the door, same day, same time. They had nothing in the place and brought them a bunch of food. And they said, we don't know why we're bringing you this food. We just thought we were supposed to bring you this food. We look at that and think, well, you know, just coincidence. No, that's not a coincidence. That's when you really believe God that you have to have something by tomorrow. And if you don't have it by tomorrow or the next day, those kids start to starve. It might be good for a day or two, but they needed food. This is what God wants to do for you. But don't make faith just about you. Make faith about everybody around you. And how can I use it to help people? Because when it becomes selfish, I think that's when it gets in the wrong vein. When it becomes about others, it's when it's in the right vein. And there are going to be times you have to believe God. Trust me, I had to do it multiple times for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. God's not going to say, well, you're selfish. That's not what I'm talking about. But let's just not focus on, I want $100,000, God. Give me 100000 by tomorrow. God, I need it. I'm going to go to my mailbox four times. I'm going to keep on looking. 
Well, what you got is nervous problem, right? I mean, if you keep on going to that mailbox, faith is not that way. Faith just says, I believe, I receive, and then has a rest and a peace in God that he's taking care of you. Let's close our eyes. I, I, think, I think we got enough out tonight. Trust me. Scratch a little bit of that surface of what we're going to talk about. Let's just pray. Father, thank you so much tonight for the word. Thank you that you're helping us to understand how to live and walk by faith in this series. And so, Father, we're just praying for every individual online, every individual in this place, that as we close this out tonight, you open up our understanding to the subject of faith like never before. We have eyes to see, ears to hear. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. As eyes are closed, heads are bowed. If you're here and you say, I don't know if I'm going to heaven, listen, it, 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 it takes faith, and this is what we call salvation faith. If you tonight don't know Jesus, it's real simple. All you have to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and the Bible says you'll be saved. We have a passion at Faith Family Church to discover all that God has for us. We welcome and honor our guests so you can experience a church that is full of life and encounter a God that's real and loves you. Our worship experiences are designed for every age, helping you to live out a personal relationship with Jesus and develop an authentic faith in Him. We want to redefine church as you might know it, and we're reaching people around the world through our live stream. So we encourage you to join us live online every Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Because Faith Family Church is for families, for singles, for couples, for the elderly, for young people, for the hurting, the lost, the hopeless. Faith Family Church is for people.